Now, with Shattered Grid, we are drawing closer and closer to the finale, and issue 11 of Go Go Power Rangers kind of proves that we're getting closer to the climax of this battle with Lord Dracon, and Shattered Grid will be coming to a close in a few months. Now, let's get right into issue 11 of Go Go Power Rangers and see what happens. Comic Review Comic Review so as we've been doing with the past few issues, this issue opens up once again with Kimberly in the world of the Coinless talking about her fight against Lord Dracon and helping the Resistance. So we see more of her side when she's on the side of the Resistance and it's a really cool side that we're seeing and we're kind of getting a better detail of why she joined Lord Dracon and this issue kind of solidifies it and we see why she does that because in this issue it opens up with Kimberly and Bulk saving a bunch of people who are injured and they're sort of like in this hospital area and things get really grim really fast when she finds Matt and Matt is not looking in good shape in this alternate timeline where it looks like he's missing an arm it's just he's broken down he's got bandages all over his ribs and arms um, so he looks pretty bad and Kimberly wants to move him out and get him to a safer place but he doesn't want to move any anywhere and it's kind of sad because she dies right in his arms and this moment here is kind of what motivates Kimberly for a reason for joining Lord Dracon and that is she wants to get really close to kill Lord Dracon and this was a theory going around in the community there's a YouTuber called the Ranger not the Ranger Champ the Power Chamber who predicted that Kimberly was sort of a double agent and his prediction was kind of right that we'll get to later down the line because everyone dying like Matt, Billy and Jason is was Kimberly's meaning or reason to join Lord Dracon so she can get close enough to kill him and I really love World of the Coinless Kimberly. She kind of reminds me of Future Trunks from Dragon Ball or Dragon Ball Z, whatever you want to call it if you read the manga or watch the anime. She does remind me of that character where she's from the future and she wants to save the past from ending up like it did in her future. So yeah, she's kind of like Future Trunks in a way where she wants to save the past and save the future. So she's a really cool character and I'm glad that we're getting to know her. We'll be getting to know her a fair bit this issue as well. Meanwhile, back in the present, we continue where we last left off with World of the Coinless Kimberly fighting present time Kimberly and the battle rages on and it looks like uh, present day Kimberly is kind of outmatched by World of the Coinless Kimberly and we're going to talk about what we saw in the preview that I posted a few like a month ago I want to say or a few weeks ago where we saw the uh, Gravesword leaning over and saying Matthew with a question mark which I think must have been edited for the preview shot that we saw but she says Matthew and she's in shock that she's seeing Matthew in this timeline she's shocked that she's seeing Matthew alive so that gives present day Kimberly enough time to get the jump on uh, the world of the coinless Kimberly and <clears throat> hit a button and basically set in this electric shockwave which defeats World of the Coinless Kimberly shedding her um what is it called bow of darkness and shutting down the grave zord so it's a really cool fight that we see them two having but if it wasn't that for distraction I think Kimberly would have lost because uh World of the Coinless Kimberly was outmat was like much stronger than present day Kimberly and easily outmatched her in fighting style and brains so it's cool that we got to see Kimberly getting some sort of tactic up on her. After that we then cut to Rita's palace on the moon where Squat and Babu come in telling her the battle is over and the rangers were victorious but they're hurt and this is a really cool panel that's drawn where we see Rita looking at the table of all the monsters and we see monsters that have yet to be seen in Go Go because Go Go is a prequel to the original series and its own timeline in a way but we see a bunch of monsters that if you watch the TV show you'll know you see Eye Guy the uh, big fat lizard that ate people you see Pudgy Pig you see the Sphinx you see the chicken guy with the scissors you see a lot of monsters that if you've seen the show or remember the show you'll know who they are so it's a little good uh, trivia or homage or a little Easter egg whatever you want to call it and she asked Vince if his work is finished 
Champ and just says, Art has never finished my coin, only abandoned. And then she goes, continue on. And she's holding these two uh, monsters or sculptures in her hands that are going to be seen at the end of the issue. We then cut to the command center where World of the Coinless Kimberly is freaking out. She basically freaks out because she's seeing her old comrades that were dead in her timeline and they're standing before her. And she's basically freaking out because she tried to kill them and she couldn't do anything about it because the Boy of Darkness has saw some sort of grip on her, sort of like the um, Sword of Darkness for Tommy back in the original series. And she's like crying, she's trapped in a nightmare, she couldn't do anything to stop herself. So it was some sort of mental manipulation that Zordon says that the uh, power, the weapon might have had over her and it's broken now. And as on that page, you get a really cool panel where everyone uh, removes their helmets and you see this aura around them. And it's cool that you see all the characters like in the in i want to say it's a really cool panel and it's you see what everyone looks like but zordon says uh this kimberly shouldn't tell anyone about the future or where she's from because we don't want to ruin the future or break any time travel rules you know what i mean she, you don't want to spoil the future for anyone and not even zordon wants to know what's going to happen the next day we cut to the rangers at school and you see matt and matt is still talking about how yeah he Thought he ne never got crushed by a giant robot and Zack and Trainee they're saying you shouldn't do any of this stuff you're gonna get yourself killed and Matt goes I'll be fine I promise because Matt thinks he's some sort of hero he's got some sort of place in this fight with the ranger when he doesn't he's just some sort of idiot you want to I don't want to call him an idiot idiot but he's high on his head thinking that he's going to be some sort of hero in this situation where he thinks he's meant to be part of this battle when he's not he's just wrapped up in the wrong he's just wrapped up in all of this and he thinks that he was chosen to get wrapped in all of this so his big crazy conspiracy fear, um, theory going on we then cut back to the little uh, we then cut back to the command center i believe where world of the coinless kimberly is fixing her bow of darkness or just her swiss army bow is what um, present day kimberly calls it which is a cute little nickname and they have this heart-to-heart -heart talk, if you want to call it a heart-to-heart -heart talk, but uh, present day Kimberly wants to know if her parents ever get back together. And she goes, you don't have to say maybe, just give me a hint or a percentage. And World of the Coinless Kimberly replies with, I'm sure I've done enough damage already, which is probably an answer for no. And as they're talking, they just have this heart-to-heart -heart talk back and forth, and present day Kimberly goes, I think I'll just hit the juice bar. And then uh, one of the corners replies with, that's a nice idea. And then the next page it cuts to them with them at the juice bar just hanging out, which is a really good slice of life stuff. And this next page is really good as well because we have Bulk walk up to um, Word of the Coinless Kimberly and Word of the Coinless Kimberly goes, I'm Kim's older, meaner and angrier cousin Sally, which I think Sally is a nickname that I could be wrong, I could be wrong here that World of the Coinless Bulk gave her in the um, flashbacks or the flash forwards. And she goes, I've heard all about you, and she steps forward and hugs him and goes, bring it all Maligan or Magellan, I, I don't know, if it, I think it's Maligan, bring it all in Maligan. And present day um, Kim asks, what's that, up? what's that about, and she replies, well, well I've got a thing for history buffs, I guess. And it's a really cool panel, I mean this made me laugh because... And ju it just made me laugh. I mean, it was a really fun, light-hearted moment to see World of the Coinless Kimberly have some sort of, like, nice moment in the, um, juice bar. And then after that, the next few pages, or I think it's just one big page, is a montage of them all just hanging out, and she's, like, living a good life. And it's really cool that you see World of the Coinless Kimberly having some fun because she's hanging out with her old comrades that... Most of them have died, like Billy's died, uh, yeah, Billy's died, Jason's died, in her current timeline right now. And you do get a panel where she's talking about, I know it's hard where you're constantly facing life and death, but it's trivial that, but it's, but what is trivial is the stuff you're fighting for. And as she says that with the, um, thought bubbles, you see, um, Billy and Jason on the panel, which I wonder if is a little know that maybe the writer got because in the world of the coinless timeline for Kimberly both two characters are dead and after that you see Matt walk in and world of the Ki world of the coinless Kimberly freaks out and runs outside and as she runs outside 
is where stuff gets real. But I do want to talk about World of the Coinless Kimberly freaking outside as she sees Matt because she saw Matt die in her arms before she went back to the past or she joined Lord Dracon and in that timeline, the World of the Coinless timeline, I'm guessing that Tommy and Kimberly never got together. She was with Matt for that extended period of time and then she still probably had feelings for Matt. She probably never moved on the Tommy and probably had some sort of feelings for Matt. But let's get into the juicy stuff that I was going to talk about earlier. So with Weld of the Coinless Kimberly outside, she tries to pull herself together and then she hears a voice going, my Ranger Slayer, there you are. Now, I probably thought, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people thought this might be Rita. And as you turn the page, it's none other than Lord Dracon in his Zeo armor, saying that he's been searching for her. And... Uh, Ranger Slayer Kim, or w Coinless Kim, replies with, Yes, Vista 5 sent me on a mission to save you, which means she was sent to go back and save him when he was captured roughly around the time after the Lord Dracon arc ended and he went into the present day. He was captured by, P by Prometheus. Pr Prometheus, you know what I mean. And Lord Dracon says he tracked his message and she goes, yeah, the rate, and Kimberly replies with the rangers of this time are foolish, it was my intention to use their trust and find a way to return to your side and aid you in. And Lord Dracon replies with that won't be possible, not yet anyway. Events have occurred that have changed things and he, and she goes, my lord, and he goes, and this is where Lord Dracon just gloats and I love how this page is drawn by the artist and it's just drawn so well by Dan. And Lord Dracon's like going, I've embarked on my great campaign to conquer rangers and in full force. And he's just gloating what he's been doing in the Mighty Morphin comics where he's just conquered world after world after world. And he goes, when I'll be powerful enough, you'll be able to return to my site at my place. And uh, <laughs> what are the world of the coinless Kimberly replies with, that means congratulations are in order. And then Lord Dracon has this awesome panel where he's just still gloating and gloating and as he gloats he goes I killed him that world's imposter I drove that wretched white tiger saber through his back and watched him die and this panel where he says that is drawn so well I love it I freaking love it I went on Twitter and said how much I'd love this panel after I read the after I read the issue and it's like Lord Dracon you see his veins his green eyes this grin it looks so malicious and evil. I just love it. I love the look in his eyes as he's gloating about killing Tommy and how he just dislikes that Tommy from that present. Where he calls him an imposter because you know that Lord Dracon's got an ego and he just gloats about killing him. It's just, it's amazing. And Word of the, Word of the Coinless Kimberly says, Are you sure that was wise and might have unexpected consequences? And... Lord Dracon goes, and all the time you've we've been together, you've never questioned my commands or decisions. And he goes, where's your bow? And Kimberly demorphs. Well, the Kim, well, I'll just call it Kimberly because there's only two people on this panel. Well, the Kimberly, what? Now I nearly said it. Kimberly demorphs and just has this look of anger at Lord Dracon, and Lord Dracon realizes that she's cleared her mind again. And she, he goes. This is the last time we'll see each other. Then, because he's not under, she's not under her, she's not under his control anymore. And Kimberly goes, "No, I'm going to kill you myself." And Lord Dracon goes, "Do you honestly think I'd leave you alive? That would have the slightest effect on my plans." He just brags. I love this. He, he's just bragging that you're not going to kill me. You're not going to kill me. It's just really cool. And he just disappears. And it's. Just those pages where you see Lord Dracon appearing and he just gloats about killing Tommy and goes, you won't kill me. You're not strong enough to kill me. It's an awesome few pages and I loved it. I just loved how it was drawn, just the confrontation between the two. And it was really cool seeing Lord Dracon shot in this comic because I thought that he'd be... As soon as I saw Lord Dracon showing up, I thought, oh shit, this is right after he conquered Korriff. Oh boy, but seeing Lord Dracon show up just got me worried that he might show up and fuck shit up, but nope, he just went on his way, and that's the end of that. We then cut to Word of the Coinless Kimberly in the command center, and she's trying to track someone down, she tells Billy. And I love the dialogue that Billy has where he goes, he calls her Old Kim when he walks in, and he's like, oh, sorry, I shouldn't call you Old, maybe I should call you Medium Kim or Sally. And he kind of gets cut off there where he 
asked, what are you doing? And like I said, she's tracking someone down, but she goes, I can't tell you because of the whole future thing. After that, Billy just walks away and Lord Kimberly, not Lord Kimberly, um, Lord of the Coinless Kimberly strikes him in the back, just electric shocks him and knocks him out cold. And Lord of the Coinless Kimberly goes, Billy, why'd you have to come in here and be so damn helpful? Which is his character. And she goes, I didn't want to help you, but I can't let him win. And she has this big speech in her head going, I can't watch my friends die again especially you Billy but if this is the right thing to do I will never let you know what I've done and after that the panel ends with two giant monsters in Angel Grove just wrecking up the place the ones we saw earlier and the design look really weird one's like a giant claw monster with a spike mace and a lobster claw and the other ones this giant thing with armor look like he's got a brain showing well that could be his helmet but he's got like this giant four hammer with a circle in the middle if it's a different kind of weapon tell me in the comment section down below but it looks really cool where you just see these two giant monsters towering over about to wreck shit but overall it was a pretty good issue i think the storytelling was a bit fast paced like how quickly they defeated the ranger slayer and turned her good but now I kind of get the feeling why we know she's turned good or she was under control because if you don't know what's happening after Shattered Grid we're getting beyond the grid where the Ranger Slayer is going to be the leader of this uh, team of different Power Rangers from different seasons and that kind of makes sense that she wasn't evil the whole time she was like an undercover agent or a double agent or she was un under some sort of mind control but I understand why the pacing was really done quickly because we've got like after this issue 12 and then we've got uh, 29 and 30 of Mighty Morphin and plus the Shadow Grid finale where that is all going to tie together eventually and we're going to get some sort of answers with what's going on. But overall, it was a pretty good chapter. Like I said, it was really fast-paced, a bit too fast-paced of how stuff moved, but I guess it's a really good thing with storytelling in a comic, because once you read this in a, like, collected page or a collected book, it's going to flow together much better, but overall, really good uh, issue. I enjoyed the art. The art was, like, spot-on, this issue. I loved it. Dan's really good at drawing, like, the rangers and the monsters and all the characters that I grew up with he's really good at doing that but we'll see where it goes because I don't have any predictions what's going to happen or where this is going I'm just going to sit down and wait for the third arc not the third arc the third act of Shadow Grid to start because we're drawing closer and closer to the finale and the finale is going to be a big 40 page issue that's going to wrap up my review or my reaction or my recap of go go power rangers issue 11 come by later on this month where we're going to talk about issue 29 of mighty morphin power rangers and shadow grid is drawing closer and closer to the finale so if you enjoyed this video hit that thumbs up if you're new to the channel subscribe have a wonderful day and i'll see you later